today I am with Curtis Bryant of Curtis Bryant Cellos in Watertown, Massachusetts. I bought my cello, you know him as Chelly, 12 years ago here in this very shop. And Kurt, thank you so much for having me today to pick your brain a little further about luthier business and craftsmanship. So Kurt, when did you first become interested in being a luthier? When I was studying at Harvard, I took courses in fine arts and went to the Museum of Fine Arts to look at the paintings. And there I met uh, Don Warnock, who was restoring Yola de Gambas in their collection. And that looked like a very interesting way to com uh, combine fine hand work that I did making optics for astronomical telescopes. I was very fortunate to meet Dario de Tilly, who had worked at Wurlitzer's, the largest violin restoration firm in the world at that time, and he mentored me um, for a number of years. So what attracted you to working with cello specifically, besides, in my opinion, I'm biased, but I think it's, it's, the, it's, it's the best sounding instrument, yes. Well, other than that, was there anything else? Other than really thinking the sound is beautiful, uh, Mr. Dettili felt that you could make a very successful cello more easily than making a violin. Also, it's a lot of physical work. <laughs> and uh, I grew up on a farm. I'm strong, so I didn't mind <laughs> doing the physical work. Well, thank goodness you are up for the challenge because now we're doing this video right in your workshop where you restore cellos, you sell cellos and people can come try out a wide variety of things. So what made you want to do an independent small business? I think a, a large part of it was I wanted to do both building, restoring, and work um, identifying fine old instruments and selling them. And if I worked in a large shop, I would just have one of those facets. Wonderful. And again, being in the Boston area, you're in Watertown, which is right next to the city, super close. What have been some of your clients or collaborators in the area? That's been one of the great advantages in Boston is that I've had many great musicians to work with. One is Alan Stefanski. Um, when he was at Harvard, I met him. I made a cello for him, which he won the audition for the New York Philharmonic. That's a brilliant endorsement right there. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. And another one of my longtime associates is Rhonda Ryder. In making copies of a beautiful Landolfi cello that I sold her, really gave me a lot of help over the years in understanding um, how to set up cellos for advanced playing. This is a copy of a cello that I sold to Ron DeRyder about 20 years ago, and I listened to her play that cello in concert and in my shop for all those 20 years, and recently made a copy for her, um, which is remarkably similar to the original, and she will be using it for some performances, I'm sure. And before we started today, you told me an incredible story about a cello sale that turned into an incredible opportunity for community outreach. Oh, this is a very interesting project. When I was in London at one of the big auctions, I saw a, Gal a Galliano cello that was in a really miserable condition. And I bought that cello and it needed such complicated restoration that I collaborated with three other luthiers, two in Germany and one here, to restore it back to a wonderful uh, performing instrument, which sounded wonderful. And a local uh, cellist, Julie Ryman, bought it, and it is now used by her in Duo Ami, which is a, a piano cello duo that does benefit concerts. I sponsor them, and so that's just been an ongoing project and I know we've mentioned some of your past clients, but in terms of cello specifically, do you have some of your favorite projects you've done? I built Testori copies, which are made out of Willow and Beach, and um, the Maud Auburn Cemetery, which is nearby, has 
those actual species from Europe, which are raised there. And a hurricane damaged two of those trees, and I was able to get the wood. The arborist at the Mount Auburn Cemetery was an avid cello music fan, and so he was instrumental, so to speak, in, in getting, you know, the big heavy equipment to cut this wood up. And I used that to make my testari copies. Oh, it was meant to be! Oh my goodness, so we're going right into cello building. So when did you decide to first try that? Because that seems like quite an undertaking. I did a lot of restoration before I started building cellos. Um, and a lot of setup, cutting bridges. All this enabled me to have contact with many musicians to completely understand the sound and also um, setting up how the neck should be shaped, all the things that contribute to comfortable, efficient performing. And through that process, really became knowledgeable about sound and playability and setup of cellos, which is, is very important. So it was about six, five, six years before I actually made a cello. So can you give us a brief timeline on your workflow when building a cello? Well, for instance, making the testari model instrument, I have these huge chunks of wood, which I split and then work down, saw them till I have the final basic components. Um, we start out by making the ribs on a mold. This is the raw wood willow for the testari model cello. And you can see it's just a thick slab, which I carved down. This is a cello that's at a more advanced stage. Um, we have a mold, which the maple ribs are bent and are supported by the mold. And then we take the outline from this. And here's the maple back, just about finished. And then tune to this to an acoustic state where they will make a, a beautiful sound and put together and carve a scroll and put it on. That's it. <laughs> and as we get to the end of the process, I tune it by listening to the resonance of it. And I understand in addition to molding and shaping the wood, you also make your own varnish. Yes, one of the challenging and very interesting part um, of my work, which this, my scientific background helps with. In the last 10 years, we finally had very uh, good scientific analysis of classic varnish. So I can duplicate closely what was originally used in classical cellos, both in terms of function, in acoustically and visually, to make something that's a transparent, beautiful, glowing varnish. Curtis Bryant of Watertown, Watertown, Massachusetts, for you New England-based cellists that want a place to come and have a browsing adventure. And for those of you who want more information on how to contact Kurt, you can find it below in the video description. Kurt, thank you so much again. It's such a pleasure as a longtime customer of yours coming in for repairs, checkups, if I have a mini cello crisis. It's just been wonderful, so I'm glad I could come in and share, share some of your work today. My, my pleasure, after you came in as a 16 year old, and it's wonderful to see how you've developed, um, become such an accomplished player, and have a wonderful website. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my pleasure, Kurt.